anxiety. Well, let's talk about depression because right? anxiety is not a disease. ADHD is not a disease. No, they're just- Let's talk about depression though, because that is technically like a disease, right? Well, anxiety is a disease and ADD is considered a disease. I mean, Why? They, they're, in the, they're in the disease classification manual. I, I don't agree. I think, I think here, let me just back up a little bit. We have like 155,000 diseases in our manual, doctor manual that we can pick from when we want to diagnose somebody. And most of them are just descriptions of the symptoms that people have, but tell you nothing about the cause. So, so is the, the root cause inflammation? The root is that the root cause, the root cause of all of this? Many things is inflammation. Not, what is not the root? Everything. What are the what are the options when it comes to root cause for you as a functional medical doctor? Yeah. So basically, at the, at the beginning, we talked about taking out the bad stuff, putting in the good stuff. Yeah, and you know the body's not that complicated. I mean, it's complex. It's very dynamic, but basically, it needs certain things to thrive mm -hmm. and certain things make it not thrive, right? So what are the things that we need to think about getting rid of that the body doesn't like? Okay. Bad food. Yep. And we can define, we've sort of defined that's processed food, sugar, most of the stuff that people are eating. 60% of our diet is ultra processed food, which is deadly. It's stress and it's, it can be physical or psychological stress. And a lot of, you know, stress is really defined as the perception of a real or imagined threat to your body or your ego. So it could be a tiger chasing you, or you could think your spouse is cheating on you, but it's not true. Or right? you could think that your boss is mad at you. Yeah, like like Woody Allen with a gun to his head has one reaction. James Bond has another action, right? That's an interesting Same example. gun, same gun, different response. So the yes. perception is is our mindset, our beliefs, our attitudes. A lot of things you talk about, Mel, are really what, what drives our stress response. How does a negative thought cause a physiological problem in your body? A stress response. Well, I'm going to answer that. Can I finish the-, the No, the, you can't. Because no, you kidding. have ADD. Because so I'm just going to continue <laughs> with the thing that I, I wanted to say. I and clearly need to, to eat more vegetables, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> I'll, I'll come back to that. So <laughs> the other few things that are the things that cause our body to be out of balance, uh, besides bad food and stress, are toxins. So we are living in a sea of environmental toxins from heavy metals to pesticides. Okay. Our gut and microbiome is a huge factor. So an unhealthy gut and bad bugs, and it can be infections or can mostly come from the gut. And last is, is things that irritate our immune system like allergens or sensitivities. Okay. Those five things. So say them the, again, bad foods. Bad food, stress, toxins, bad bugs, and allergens. Okay, yeah. got it. And those interact with our biology with seven basic systems that we have that keep us healthy. And if, we have those things, they create imbalance. So we have to get rid of those things, take out the bad stuff. So what are the good stuff? What are the ingredients for health? How does our bodies thrive? We know how to take care of our car, we change the oil, we fill up the air in our tires, we you know, get the tune up, we change the bark plugs, whatever. Like most of us have a clue. In our bodies, we have no clue. So what are the things our bodies need? We need the right nutrients and nutrition. And it's a little bit personalized, but I've written a lot about how to find uh, a way of eating that's good for you mm -hmm. and that you like, it's culturally relevant, it's affordable. Second is nutrients. We are often deficient in many nutrients, particularly omega-3s, vitamin D, B vitamins, iron, zinc. These are magnesium common nutritional deficiencies that have broad impacts across the body, including our mood. Uh, then we need the right balance of hormones. We need the right amount of light at the right time. So if you're having you know, blue light at night, you're not going to sleep. If you don't have you know, blue light in the morning, you're you're um, brain can't reset for the day. When you say blue light in the morning, are you talking about bright sunlight. light outside? Sunlight, okay. go outside. I didn't really realize minutes. that sunlight was blue light. Yeah, well, it's got blue in the blue light spectrum. Oh, okay. Yeah, so at night, we just are overstimulated with our computers and our screens and the screws up. So we need the right kind of light. We need the right uh, type of clean air. We need clean water. We need movement, like exercise. We need resetting, restoration, uh, relaxation, resetting the vagus nerve, sympathetic this nervous system needs to be calmed down, mm. right? That's not a passive activity. So you have to actively relax, mm. right? Whether it's breathing or yoga or meditation or whatever, prayer, or journaling, a million ways to do it. Then we need also sleep. And most of us are not getting enough sleep or good quality sleep. So seven, eight hours minimum for most people is essential. And there's a lot of talk, talk we can talk about sleep. And then we need connection, community, love, meaning and purpose. These are all ingredients for health. In my book, I talk about how, for example, if we cured heart disease and cancer from the face of the planet, we'd extend our life by five to seven years. If we cured loneliness? If we cured loneliness and developed connection and meaning and purpose, we extend our life by seven years or more. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute, 
basically having meaning and purpose and connection in your life is more powerful than curing cancer and heart disease in terms of longevity. So we, we and I know from my travel, the blue zones, that was a big part of the medicine they had was community is medicine. Right. Connection is medicine. Yeah. You know? And yeah, most, and I'm sure you're seeing it as a uh, epidemic of loneliness, especially coming out of the pandemic. Totally, totally. So th- those are the ingredients for health that we need to provide, and everybody needs different ones. For example, some, some people might need more vitamin D. Some people might need more sleep. Some people need meat, different kind of exercise. So it's really personalized. But those are the basic ingredients. So it's that's sort the, of personalized, right? Yeah. Because like just talking There's, to the broad audience that's listening, you you've mentioned a number of supplements. And it's the same ones over and over. So for anybody listening that's like, okay, I got it. I have to do something. We've already talked about diet and Mm -hmm. changing your diet and even just noticing that if you were to remove the things we've talked about and add in this very simple, clean, healthy, vegetable forward and clean protein diet in Six to ten days, you're going to feel like a different yeah. person. Just try it. But try what, it, and, what, and then you can decide what you want to do after that, right? Yes. I, want, I want to keep eating my donuts. Okay, fine. Then you're going to feel like crap. And you, if you want to feel like crap, it's your prerogative. Right? Well, I'll tell you something. I am now on. It's like I don't know, day thirty something of not drinking. It's life changing. Yeah, totally. It's totally life changing, and I cannot believe how much clearer I am. Mm-hmm. I cannot believe how much more present I am. Mm-hmm. I cannot believe that I don't really miss it. Yep. And I had committed to doing this for almost three months. And I don't know how I'll incorporate it back, if ever. Hmm. Maybe here and there. But yeah. like it just right. was such a profound difference for right. me that I'm kind of dumbfounded I didn't do this earlier. Yeah. And so I think you can tell almost immediately. But will you explain to everybody, if you're not currently taking a high-quality multivitamin or other supplements, what are the non-negotiables where everybody should start. You know, for probably less than a dollar a day, you can get what you need, which is a multivitamin. Yep. And I would say a a good one. It's cleanly produced. It doesn't have fillers, additives, How do you tell if it's a good one? I have curated ones that are high grade. In other words, the ones that uh, are manufactured in good manufacturing practices that don't have fillers, chemicals, and additives that are bioavailable forms of nutrients. And so if you stick with certain brands, they you can kind of guarantee you're going to get that. Okay. Um, then then uh, I think a vitamin D for almost everybody, even in the summer, people are like, oh, I'm taking you know, vitamin D in the summer, I don't need it. You do. Most people, unless they're out there running around half naked between 10 and 2 every day all year long, you're going to be vitamin D deficient. That's only you. I've seen you in your before and after photos that we're going to link. The dude is tan with the six pack. You're running around getting the vitamin D. He's embarrassed and laughing. We know it's true. Now, is there different forms of D, vitamin like D3? D3? Vitamin D3. And do you have to take it with and, something yeah. else to be absorbed? Uh, with fat. You need it with fat. Uh, so with food, basically. Okay. Uh, so maybe between 1,000 to 5,000, the government guidelines say up to 4,000 is safe. So there's no okay. downside to that. And then fish oil for most people, because 90 plus percent of us are deficient in omega-3 fats because we don't eat wild food that much anymore. And what does the fat do? It, it, these omega-3 fats are, are fats that we need in small amounts that are what our brains are made up of. Oh. They regulate inflammation. They are what our cell membranes are made of. They are basically the, the most critical fats that we consume, and most of us don't have enough of them. And they, mm. they can treat depression and, and very many mental issues. Even ADD has been found to be helpful. Postpartum depression. I mean, so a lot of things that we just think, oh, well, what, what do we do with these things? But there are great studies that show that these can be effective. So I think that's a kind of basic non-negotiable. Got it. So do, multivitamin, everybody, the D3. And fish oil. And fish oil. What about magnesium? Because you've mentioned it well, a couple sure. times. Well, sure. That's, that's uh, my fourth one. But you know, depending on your symptoms. And how do you know you need magnesium? Well, I don't know. <laughs> how do I know? <laughs> listen listen up, everybody. It's pretty simple. If you have everything, anything that's irritable or twitchy or spasmy, it's likely you're magnesium deficient. So if you're anxious, your emotions are twitchy. If you have palpitations... It's twitchy. If your colon's not working and it's as bad, you have know, constipation. If you have muscle cramps, you have eye twitching. Any of those things are signs of low magnesium. I'm just twitching as you <laughs> describe those symptoms. Because I'm like, check, check. You know, I'm going to use, I promised everybody a... Uh, appointment, zero cost, with one of the world's most respected uh, medical experts and leaders, leading voices in the functional medicine space. My toes cramp all the time. Yeah. Why? You know, everybody's favorite radio station, you know what that is? No. WIFM. 
What does that mean? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so your toes. <laughs> yes, my toes. <laughs> probably cramp because you have either electrolyte imbalances or magnesium. Oh. And um, so if, you know, people often don't have enough electrolytes in their diet, particularly potassium. So you can get that from eating lots of vegetables, from vegetable broths, or take electrolyte uh, solutions. But taking magnesium is a huge cure for muscle cramps, and it's particularly foot cramps. So what surprising things cause your magnesium to go down? So we should, we should have a lot of magnesium because it's in all foods, nuts and seeds and a lot of plant foods. But we do so much to make our bodies dump magnesium in our urine. We drink too much soda. We have too much caffeine, too much alcohol, and too much stress, all of which cause us to lose magnesium in our urine. How does it make you lose magnesium if you drink a soda? Well, it's got something called phosphoric acid in it, which uh-huh. is uh, in the dark colored colas, and that causes you to leach magnesium out. And wow. yeah. And what about seltzer versus water? Like bubbly. Like is bub- it like, like a, is is I'm I'm really curious about whether or not drinking seltzer. It's okay to drink bubbly water. I think you should mix it up. But if you only drink bubbly water, it's probably not totally great for you. But if you you know have water and sparkling water, you like that. I I love sparkling water, so not okay. An issue. All right. Well, thank you, doctor. Mm. Um. Can we talk about hormone imbalance? Yes, we can. How do you know if your hormones are out of whack? Well, and and what role do hormones play in your gut? Yeah. And and I would love to selfishly focus on women if that's yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, listen, you said that you had a chance to go down to the Ultra Wellness Center mm-hmm. and see our docs. And you, not everybody can come see us. Yes. So this is why I write book after book after book to be how-to manuals to help you identify where your problems are and what to do about them. And in the Young Forever, I have a whole series of quizzes that aren't fancy tests. They're literally just questions you answer and you get a score and you go, oh, wow, my hormones are out of whack or my detox system is not good or I'm way inflamed or I have magnesium deficiency, like those questions I just rolled off about yep. what your symptoms would be. So it's pretty easy to identify what you're, what's going on. Now, d- women in particular have way more complex hormonal history than men. Yep. Uh, men go through andropause and they're, they kind of lower their testosterone. That sounds age. weird. Andropause? <laughs> yeah. It's male menopause, basically. And what happens when dudes go through male menopause? Uh, you know, they get low libido, sex drive, trouble having erections, lose the muscle mass, get a little more soft and round. You know, basically, that's what happens. <laughs> and I at grumpy and grumpy because of those things. Low motivation. You know, a little depressed. Yeah, but but with women, they go through you know puberty, and then they have you know their teenage cycles, and then they have their twenties cycles, and their thirty cycles, and their forty cycles, and then fifties. So it changes every decade. Women are having changing hormones, and everything happens from PMS to irregular cycles to heavy bleeding to, to PCOS, PCOS yeah. yeah, to PCOS to pre perimenopause to menopause. And so you know, there's no one prescription for all of it. But essentially, what we do know is that just like everything else we talked about, the things that cause imbalance in our body that we listed off, right? The food stress, toxins, et cetera, and the ingredients for health are also influencing our hormones. Mm. So, And what role do hormones play? So if we had to just like kind of even get more basic. What are hormones? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm serious. Like, because I think yeah, we yeah. throw around these terms, yeah, sure, but sure, I sure, personally sure. am like, well, what actually, what, yeah. what role does the hormone play? Well, hormones are like the communication command and control centers in your body. Uh, I thought the neurotransmitters were. Uh, they are they are regulatory pathways that affect your brain a lot. Okay. Uh, and they do work in other areas of your body. But in your brain, you have something that's like a command center. It's called the hypothalamus. Okay. And this this is this is like a, a, you know, radio traffic control on an, air, an and, airport. And for those of you who are not watching this on YouTube, I want you to know that Dr. Hyman is pointing right <laughs> between right the eyebrows. Eye. And yeah. I think the reason why that's we good. all get that scrunchy wrinkle <laughs> Right there is because that yeah. is the command center. Yeah, it's a little bit Stressful. inside. It's like I can't quite touch it because it's inside my head. But okay, it's what's it called again? The hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. And that, that's controlling our sex hormones like estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, and so on. It's controlling our stress hormones like cortisol. It's mm. controlling our uh, hormones that have to do with a growth hormone. It has so There's thyroid hormones. All these hormones are controlled by this command and control center. Okay. And so what happens, particularly with women, is that they not only have trouble with 
their sex hormones because of all the stresses and toxins and everything in our life. But they also, thyroid problems are really big and often under, underdiagnosed. And then you get insulin, which is becoming out of balance as you get older. Is insulin a hormone? Insulin is a kind of a signaling hormone peptide made by your pancreas. Okay. And and that regulates blood sugar and insulin. Mm -hmm. I mean, blood sugar and, and your, your, your body, but it also kind of, uh, when it's out of balance and you eat too much sugar and starch, you get this increasing belly fat and weight gain and that's caused by insulin. And then there's the stress hormones, cortisol. So women are subjected, particularly as they get into their 30s and 40s to this sort of imbalances in sex hormones, thyroid hormones, stress hormones, and blood sugar control hormones, insulin. And that that those are like the four horsemen of the apocalypse when they got out of wow. balance. <laughs> yes. And so functional medicine, you, know, you don't have to treat each one separately. If you do the you basic shouldn't. things, you get your lifestyle sorted out, you eat right, you exercise, you learn stress reduction techniques, you you know get enough sleep, you take your basic supplements, you get rid of all the crap in your life as best you can. Your hormones will reset. You don't you don't actually have to treat them directly. Now sometimes you do. If women, you know, have uh, menopausal stuff like terrible hot flashes or vaginal dryness or whatever. But for example, if you're drinking... Check, a... check. What about <laughs> the uh, thickening in the middle? That's the one that's yeah, bothering me now. Right. I'm not down with that. No, that's not good. No, but that, that's, he just looked down the, to see that... the thickening in the middle. I saw that. <laughs> but that that's that the insulin part. That's the blood sugar control. So part. what do I do? Because so, I'm getting so many people writing about this yeah. too, because I've been talking well, about it. I'm like... This is not fair. Yeah, I have stopped yeah, drinking. Yeah. I have the healthiest lifestyle I've ever had. I yeah. exercise every day. I eat the three quarters of the vegetables, clean yeah. protein. I get outside in the morning. Like yeah. I'm doing it all. Check, 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 yeah. check, check. What the fuck is going on? I mean, it, you, you definitely hormones change. So sometimes there's things to tweak. Sometimes um, there's ways you can sort of modify your diet a little bit or exercise a little differently to sort of regulate this. But it's sort of checking what's going on. Maybe your thyroid's a little off or oh. maybe... Your, your insulin's a little higher than you think and you have mm. more insulin resistance. Or maybe, you know, you need to sort of increase testosterone because that gets lower too and that increases muscle mass and body fat loss. So, so it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a symphony that you have to, to be a conductor and make sure it's all playing in tune. Well, I, my, the visual I got was whack-a-mole. Like the second I hit the <laughs> insulin correctly, the, you know, the no, other thing like, shoots no, up. No, it's but... not like that. It's not like that. It's actually, it actually all works the other way. It's actually when you, when you treat the root causes, then everything gets better. So one question for you, if you can't afford to go to somebody in functional medicine to get this all tested, mm. how do you figure out what's going on? You have in your new book, Young Forever, mm. you have all of these self-assessments yeah, that yeah. you can do, yeah. but do you have to have testing at some point or is there a way for you to, to get testing? have an accessible way? Yeah. Because a lot of, like one of the things, I agree with you. I agree with you that our medical approach and the medical system is about treating illness yeah, versus sure. keeping you healthy and whole. I agree that we treat symptoms, but we never we have a hard time getting to the root cause. I agree. I agree. So But the, so I just want to like cuz I know that what's going to happen with this conversation Dr. Hyman is that we are going to activate anyone listening to absolutely take the next 10 days of your life and see what happens when you reset your diet mm -hmm. and you remove a few things. Absolutely add in those simple supplements that cost you less than a dollar a day and you are worth that investment in yourself and see what happens. Absolutely take the steps to lower your stress and tap into your body's ability to reset, like even just the five deep breaths a day yeah. that activate the vag and tone the vagus nerve. But if somebody's going, I want to learn more yeah, what yeah. is the next right step uh, that's a great question and and uh, you know one of the the challenges i've always had with medicine is it's kind of a secret guild and doctors hold the reins they can order the tests or they can't they will give you the results or they won't they'll help you interpret them or they won't and so you're at the sort of women mercy of whoever you're seeing and, and most doctors do a good job and want to help people but they kind of it kind of kept in the guild so uh, in the book, Young Forever, I do have really extensive questionnaires that allow you to figure out almost 80% of what's going on. Yep. And then depending on what you find in those, you can kind of follow up with different kinds of testing. But, but because of this problem, exactly that you're talking about, I, I decided to co-found a company with a good friend called Function Health, which allows you, without a doctor's order, to go to any Quest lab in the country, and there's thousands of them, oh. get a blood draw of 
a hun- over 100 biomarkers that normally cost $15,000 for 500 bucks. Wow. And it comes with a whole interpretive map and framework and dashboard that's filtered through the lens of functional medicine that I wrote <laughs> that allows people to not have to go see the doctor and still do 80% of or Why the 90%. hell did I go to your clinic then if I could have just done this, Dr. Well, Hyman? <laughs> bearing the lead. No, I'm just kidding. I am just kidding, everybody. I do want to say something that... I was able to go to the medical center yeah. right here in this tiny town of Manchester, Vermont, yeah. and have blood drawn yeah. for those tests. Yeah, right. And so totally. you don't have to go to your primary care. You don't have to go. All of the the minute clinics that are popping right. up are places where you can go if you're going to do those things to order the blood draws. Well, the thing is, you have to usually get a doctor's order. So the yeah. beautiful thing about Function Health, this company that we created, was that you don't need a doctor's order. So you can go to the website, sign up, and they'll work network with over fifty different states doctors in every one. I love where you this. can just go and get and get kind of dis- the testing done. Yeah, get the testing done, get your results, and track it over time. And you can see your hormones, your thyroid, your insulin, your like age related markers, uh, your brain chemistry. So much about what's going on with your. You know body. what's so cool about this? If you can afford to do it, and we'll put the link in the show notes, is it's like getting an X ray of your insides. Yeah. yeah. And, and you've and, already you've already you've proven to us that you heal from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And and I'm so excited about this approach because it empowers people to be the CEO of their own health. And the re- the reality is that you know even if you go to the doctor with all these complaints, they're going to be able to quote manage your symptoms. I don't want to manage people's symptoms. I want people to get better. I want people to reverse these problems and not need a doctor. And the truth is most of the things that work are not things you're going to get at a doctor's office, which is drugs and surgery. So sometimes you need them, and I use them. It's not a bad thing. But most of the problems we have don't respond very well to that. And all these things that we talk about, whether it's depression. I mean, antidepressants just suck. They don't work that well. They have all these side effects. And uh, anxiety medications are highly addictive. I mean, they just cover over the symptoms. What if you could actually figure out why you're having the problem and fix it? Well, I think you told us why. It's inflammation. It's a gut that's out of whack. Mm -hmm. It is uh, the stressors in your life. Mm -hmm. It is the toxins in your environment. Mm -hmm. And not understanding that your body has this elegant design that is super intelligent and responsive and can heal itself if you are conscious and intentional about the right input. Yeah. And, that, and that's what's exciting that's happening now in science is we're actually getting there. Like the, the old paradigm's dying. And in the longevity space that I've been working in, and when I wrote about it in Young Forever, where, where these scientists are now talking about what's underlying all these diseases, these 155,000 mm. diseases, that's not what we need to be thinking about. It's these 10 underlying problems that t- tend to go wrong as we get older that, that can explain all disease. And if we treat those, we may not be able to just extend our life by five years by getting rid of cancer or heart disease, but by 30 or 40 years. That means living to be 120 and being in good shape. Like I don't want to to be 120 in a nursing home in a wheelchair. I want to be able to ride my bike, go for a horseback ride, make love. You know, That's what I want to do when I'm 100 or 120. Wow. I, you know, yeah, I'm glad that you said that because Oftentimes I hear the word longevity and I had that reaction. Like, yeah. well, I don't want to be rotting away in a nursing home. At exactly. Like 125. Well, well, that sounds terrible. It's terrible because most of what we see, Mel, in the world is abnormal aging. And we think that's normal. Oh, it's normal to become frail and decrepit and not be able to do what you want and lose function. And the truth is that most of us, our health span doesn't equal our lifespan. The last 20 years of our life. What's the difference between health span and lifespan? Well, health span is how many years you're healthy and mm. you can do what you want. And lifespan is how many years you're alive. So if you're fine until you're 60, then you get dementia in your nursing home for 20 years. That you know that's not good. So yes. that that's what you want to do is make your health span equal your lifespan. So on my last day, I want to go for a hike with my beloved. I want to come home make a delicious dinner. I want to have a bottle of wine, probably a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream, and <laughs> wait a minute, <laughs> that love. wasn't on the diet. Uh, who cares? I'm 120, and then, <laughs> and, then, and then and then I make love. <laughs> And I close my eyes and drift off and maybe take a jump in the pond. <laughs> that sounds incredible. You know, my mother-in-law is 85 years old. She jumps out of airplanes. She walks five miles a day. There you go. She's having the time of her life. When Chris and I like went alcohol free for a bit, she's like, I'm not doing that. Like I, I have my one glass of red wine a day. That's what I need. She plays cards. She prioritizes friends. Yeah, exactly. She is the definition of vitality. At that age. Yeah. And I, she's like the Energizer Bunny. I, I can't imagine her 
running out of steam. And that's what I think you're talking about yep. when it comes to vitality. Yeah. Um, we One thing we did not touch on that I know we're going to get a lot of questions on is probiotics. Mm. So you talked about microbiomes being mm -hmm. these little bugs in your gut that help your body break apart what I hope is going to be the fuel that your body needs, not the chemicals that the mm. big food companies have sold to you in the grocery store. Mm. So how do you reset the gut in terms of what probiotic or is there a strain you should yeah. take or what should you, is yogurt uh, enough? Like tell, tell us well, what to do. The truth is Mel, that, that most of what determines the health and quality of your microbiome is what you're eating. Okay. Right? So you need to feed your gut right. You need to tend your inner garden right. And that's not that hard to do. What is it like? It likes lots of fruits and vegetables. It likes lots of fiber. It likes probiotic foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, and things like that. It likes prebiotic foods, which are like the fertilizer that feed the good bucks. Things like asparagus, artichoke, uh, plantain, jicama, the list goes on. So we, we can do that a lot through our diet. And to not eat gut-busting foods, things like tons of sugar, processed food, food additives, emulsifiers, chemicals, all those things damage our microbiome. And then drugs. We're on a lot of drugs, antibiotics, acid blockers, and hormones, and all these things can really screw up our gut microbiome, I, I, I like drugs like Advil and you know the, the anti-inflammatory drugs. So we have to be really smart about taking out the things that bust our gut and put in the things that heal our gut. And that's that's really well outlined in my book, Young Forever. But the 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 probiotic can be a useful tool, but it's not in replacement of the diet. So you're basically saying if you eat sugary cereal for breakfast you're and then you have chicken nuggets <laughs> and pizza for lunch. Yeah. And then you have like a takeout whatever, fried whatever Pop in one probiotic is not going to help? Yeah, no. Okay. And the other thing that's really amazing is that we learned that they like polyphenols, which are- What is that? I know, right? Big word. There's like a million molecules in colorful fruits and vegetables mm. that are the medicine in food. Mm. And these medicines uh, work in many ways in our body, and particularly on a lot of the longevity switches. But it turns out that these microbes in your gut like to eat them. Oh. Right. And so remember that weird name, Acromancia, that I was mentioning? I forgot it, but yeah. now I do. <laughs> but the one that produces this like natural Valium uh -huh. in your gut, yeah. that bug really likes green tea. It likes oh. pomegranate and it likes cranberry and really? it likes all the molecules. So you have to feed them. And like you, you, you know, you have little critters in there. You got to take care of them. And, and so food is the, big, is the biggest solution. And yes, probiotics can help and prebiotic supplements and fibers can help. Uh, but we really want to actually make sure we we actually take care of it by eating what we need to be eating. And I I, I had actually horrible colitis years ago from taking an antibiotic that screwed up my gut, hmm. and and I cured it using a lot of these polyphenols and prebiotics. And I and as a result, I, I was mixing all this different stuff. From, I created like a simple solution called gut food, which is a powder like a multivitamin for the gut, and it's it's basically what I take every day to keep my gut healthy. Do you put it in a shake? Yeah, you can, it tastes it good, actually. You can, you can put it in like a water and mix it up, or you can throw it in a Nutribullet, and, you know, it's really yummy. Wow. So you mentioned several times that you've written about what to eat. Can you tell everybody where to go well, to uh, find all this? Because the show notes are going to be 10 pages long. Anywhere where am you I find saying? Dr. Hyman, all I do is talk about food as medicine, but I've written a number of books. One is called Food, What the Heck Should I Eat? Mm. <laughs> food, What the Heck Should I Cook? <laughs> and The Pegan Diet, which is kind of a spoof on the extremes of paleo and vegan. And what are the principles? And it's really an easy digestible, almost like bathroom book where you have you know, 20 or so principles that you can read one and it's basically about the time it would take you to go to the bathroom at a time. And, and, and they tell you, you know, what you should know about each category of food. What are the best vegetables? What are maybe ones you want to watch? What are the best forms of dairy? What are the best forms of meat? What are the best forms of nuts and seeds? And what you should be doing to take care of your gut or balance your hormones. So it's all in there. And I think I think the vegan diet is kind of a fun, easy easy way to go. Well, and if you put it in your bathroom, you can actually mark your progress. Because you if go. you read it in the bathroom, <laughs> you will know within a couple of weeks of finishing the book yeah. whether or not applying yeah. the stuff that you just learned had any material effect Absolutely. on your digestion, which create, I create a whole would, Instagram site about that. <laughs> yes, exactly. You're incredible. We'll keep going. Dr. Hyman. We, we could do another one and just like do part two. <laughs> In the house, man. We might just do that. Boy, do I have 
an incredible gift for you today. You are getting world-class medical and research-backed simple tactics today to improve your health, to improve your energy, to improve your vitality. We are gonna do some healing today from the inside out. Who the hell am I talking about? Dr. Mark Hyman. 